So we're going to start with constructing the top view and I'm going to project my width up to get the placement of my view and I also have my mitre line that's here as well and transfer my depth over. Right, so this is the placement for our top view. I'm going to carry this feature over. This gives me the width of the feature, but this gives me the depth of the feature. So I'm going to carry this up. All right, it should fall about midway because that's what's happening with this one. So I know this is on this is on the right side. If I follow through here, this is where it's going to fall, and this is also where it relates to. So I'll construct my right side view. Sorry, my top feature on it. Let's try not to have double lines and try to maintain consistency in our line. Then I'm going to hit my define the rest of my object on the outer edges. Right, if we look at our, um, on the left of it, on the right of it, this point represents an edge. This is also telling us it's a full depth. Um, now we're gonna go up with this particular feature. This is giving me the width of it. And then this is giving me the depth of it. So this comes down and this comes across. So now we have the same feature that's happening on our top view and our right side view with the incline surface that's distorted on both. All right. <clears throat> now, our first step is to is to project um, ninety degree lines or be perpendicular from our surface. So let's do that. And I'm going to go further out. So I know I've passed both my views that I have drawn. And then I'm going to place my auxiliary reference view. So I'll start it somewhere here. Once I know it's not touching any of my views or my isometric right and i've made it easy it's 45 degrees so everything should be 45 degrees in either direction but it's also still 90 degrees that we are drawing it it should not change based off of where we're projecting it okay so i'm going to take my sheet of paper and i'm going to transfer the depth from my right side view to my auxiliary okay again this is my auxiliary reference plane okay <clears throat> So I'm taking my depth that I've just marked off and I'm going to transfer it over to my auxiliary reference plane. This is where I'm starting my drawing. So this is my depth that I am marking out. And we can put extra guides to make sure that we maintain uh, a straight line or maintain the depth. Oops. Right. I am not going to give it so we know our unit right now is th three units wide. I'm not going to count three units wide from it because it's going to be much wider, right? I can't go one, two, three. It's going to be much wider than it's supposed to be. So we've marked out exactly three units from here to there. <clears throat> and I'm not going to block it out yet or define anything because our shape is an L shape and we need to construct that. Then I'm going to take the depth of this particular feature here, this top piece, right? 
I'm going to go over here and I'm going to mark it out. And I'm going to take it all the way down to the bottom as well. So we're creating a guide to follow. And all of this is in construction lines. Once we've done that, we're going to project our feature from here and project it all the way up until it intersects. That gives me where that ends. So this is my feature for my L. And that is our auxiliary view. All right, just pay attention to the fact that the shape does not change. It's just an elongated, elongated version since it's giving us the true shape or the true size of that particular surface. Now we're gonna look at our isometrics with constructing it. The first thing we do is we construct the foundation of what the block looks like. It's a truncated prism and then we have a cutout to it. So right now I've blocked in my front and my right side, right? Um, I can add my top view, but I don't need to do that right now. So I'm going to first block out the foundation of my block and right and it is a truncated prism or a prism that is cut at an angle so that's my truncated prism we have the shape of what it looks like we can now go into cutting it out so first things first we know that there is a one and a half unit cut into it Right, so somewhere about there. So it goes up to units, and I can go up to units. And then if we look at our top view, right, we see that it goes straight across. So once we have an edge here, it means that we should be coming across this way. So I'm gonna come across, maintaining my 30 degrees, and now I have the start of my cutout. Right, I'm not going to go to my inclined surface just yet. I'm just going to define these edges so you can get a visual of what it looks like. We can actually construct this particular piece as well. So I'm going to do that. And where it intersects, right where it touches, that's where our edge will we start to go on our incline. Okay, something looks a little weird here. Make sure that we're maintaining the 30 degrees. Okay, now I can start with my cutout but I don't want, I don't have anywhere to intersect it to yet. So I wanna make a guide that's going straight down so it's parallel to these inclines or slants, all right? So this is about one and a half and I'm going to bring this so that it is parallel, all right? Parallel on both sides. Now that's my guide. Now I'm going to bring my cutout or my edge of my cutout and I'm going to bring it across until it intersects with my guide. Once it does that, that now gives me that first inner piece, but it also gives me the edge that's happening on my inclined surface. I can make this define, make this define, and then our last piece is just to bring this across and meet it endpoint to endpoint. And that's our isometric. I hope this helps, guys.